Good morning. Despite those incredibly heavy winds outside today, they are still not strong enough to disturb the planets and the stars. They move at their own pace. And who better to interpret and observe their influence Jocelyn Savard. Jojo is here with us this morning. Give us a call, 1-800-363-9995. She will answer your questions on life, love, money, whatever you want to know. Give us a call, 1-800-363-9995. Good morning, Jojo. Good morning, my beautiful Suzanne. It's a <laughs> pleasure you? to be here with you once more time. <laughs> now, today, you have brought with you a horoscope chart. Yes. You've had a lot of people asking you questions, so how do you do this? How do you know where the planets are and how they influence? So today Jojo brought a chart with her, so we're going to take a look at it and you're going to tell us briefly yes. how this works. Absolutely. Uh, whatever it's an individual chart or for a monthly chart or for a year chart, this is how we do it. You see, you place the planet, the, the, since the beginning of time, planets, they follow the same kind of circle over and over again. We live in what you call a universe which is totally, completely organized and perfectly timed. That's why we have the days and the months and the years always repeating themselves. So you see all the planets here. You have Mercury, you have the sun, the moon. They travel around here and they create in between them some relationships, sometimes good or sometimes bad. Little square is not very good. Little triangle is excellent. Oppositions, it could be good or not good depending on the relationship. So when we know, like when you call us and you give us the date of birth, we know, especially dealing with the Mercury or Venus or Jupiter and Saturn, which are what all... Uh, in life, everything is complementary. There's always a positive force, negative force, mm -hmm. which relate to each other in order to come to a conclusion. So you, I know all my ephemeris. Ephemeris is a book of astronomy which gives you all the way that the planets travel. So it's absolutely fantastic. So if people, when you go to see astrologers, this is what they do at your, at your birth. Mm -hmm. And if you want to know things about what happens with the year, they create the same chart and they make a relationships between the, the chart. And this is how you could talk about what's going to happen to you in your love, in your money and your finances, if you're going to travel, if you should take this job, if you should expect some changes in the, some career situation, mm -hmm. and it's fantastic. So I, sh I thought they would there like to know this, now okay? That's how it all works. Okay. I want to ask you a question just before we go to the phones this morning. Everybody wants to know the big question, Canada's future, with or without Quebec? Okay. I think that that war, uh, well, third world war and things like that, I think now it's really over in everybody's uh, mind. I think individuals right now are changing more or less the big, the big people of the politician. And I really believe that um, all that war situation made, made us aware that we have things which, which are together. We have an incredible, beautiful country called Canada, which is probably one of the best countries in the world to be right now. You have every race and every culture, every religion which are in here. And even compared to the United States, we're even more, I would say, evolved in a certain respect as far as human beings. What will happen is I think divorces, separation, everybody right now, if you go to, to Vancouver, you go to Nova Scotia, you go, everybody's sort of been pulling the blanket on their sides and everybody says, I want to be independent. I want independent, independent, not only Quebec. I think after the war situation, people will realize that separation and divorce is not really, it's out of fashion. So rather than doing drastic changes, I believe that people will start making, saying, rather than strictly listening to the politician, and I think there's going to be some major changes in the federal, federal government anyways, and even the provincial government here will also take another look at it in a way that they will find a, a very unusual solution to rather meet everybody's need, a, a, according to the provinces in order to communicate and to talk more be, instead of being emotional and uh, like it, with a stubborn attitude, everybody will see more the possibility of rather communicating and getting together in order to solve mm -hmm. the problem. I am absolutely certain after the work experience that people right now will join in rather than separate and divorce because I think divorces are out of fashion. The whole rest of the world right now, all everything is falling down. There's no more fences in Russia. Everything is happening. The world is is the the whole world movement right now. The new world that's happening is uni. uni of things, mm -hmm. not uh, separation. So and I think many individuals who are a little bit fanatic or m nationalistic in a way, not realize, realizing what we have to lose about it, I think now with the recession, especially with people not having so much money in their pockets, people losing their jobs, everybody is, is thinking maybe that we should do more getting together and fight for our own economy as a national country rather than trying to split the power between each other. And I think this is what's happening right now. Okay. But expect a lot of changes in government, especially in the federal. And I think the new government, there's going to be some elections this year and uh, towards the end of the year. And you're going to see June and July. We're going to talk about this. Mm -hmm. And I think this whole new approach will bring some good solutions as far as Canada. And I think English and French will see what they could do to they 
will negotiate for the first time and come to some kind of nice understanding, but unusual, something different that was done before. Okay? Hello All there. Right, Georgia, Good morning. Thanks. I'd like to know about my love life. My birthday is on December 19, 1952. What do you want to know about your love life? Well, I've been in my career heavy in it for the last three years, and uh, I haven't had much of one, so I wanted to know if there's anything in the future. Okay. Okay. Just a second. You already, everything you have in life, you paid your dudes for. You never had anything easy, right? Right. <laughs> Since the beginning, okay? Because of the, you, I just saw, uh, look at your uh, numerology. Love life, a little bit more patient. I think what you have to do for the next six months, if I were you, six, seven months, until approximately like uh, we're March, uh, I would say even July and August in your case, I think you're in the time right now to regenerate yourself. I think your energy was so flat and so down for the last five, six months that I would look, I would work on my style, on my image, on my, on my everything to do with the health, with my beauty. Are you in, in a mood right now like to make changes about your appearance and do all kind of things like, things like that about your sex appeal, about how you attract people? Yes, I do. You have to continue to do so. I am sure if you just continue to work on yourself and love yourself and put a lot of energy in yourself, there's going to be some people coming and entering your life in July, August, and September. It's not impossible that it does not happen. And believe in yourself because you, you have a little fear sometimes. You don't really have that total confidence in life the way you should have. So have faith. Are you going to have faith? I hope so. Be, believe in yourself and plant those seeds of love. And I'm telling you, at the end of the summer, in your case, you will not be lonely because I think it's time for you to get some. Stand okay? Good morning. Good morning. Jacqueline, I'm Aquarius. Yeah. I was born February the 11th, 1932. Mm hmm. At 7 o'clock in the morning. Parfait. 7 o'clock in the morning, that means you're a Pisces uh, uh, rising. Did you know that? No. It means you are a very, very idealist person. You believe in humanity. You have. A lot of love and friendship is more important even than passion. Is it true? Mm -hmm. Okay. This, you know, this very good news, good news for you. 6th and 7th of February, Saturn is going into your sign. It's leaving the, 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 the sign of Capricorn. And in your case, what it will do, because of your year, you are a monkey in Chinese horoscope, less going up and down and less insecurity and much more of a positive outlook in life altogether. One of the things that will shock you is a lot of peace and something with, to do with your love life and sentimental life more stable because I feel that uh, you've s still that kind of inner peace you've been searching for, for that for quite a long time, maybe seven, eight years or even more in your case. Is it true? Yes. You are going to start getting things in your life more happening. There seems to be love entering your life more. After the 6th, 7th, by your birthday, you should have a total different kind of uh, surroundings around you. You are starting to receive, and don't be afraid to do so. And also, uh, financially, after September, October, in your case, much more security, more stability. No matter what happens with the rest of the world, in your case, it seems to be an improvement there. And I wish it to you with all my heart. Born September 15, 1963. Mm-hmm. And I was just wondering what type of career would be good for me. Right now, I've just graduated in photography. Okay. Did you say 53 yeah, or 63? 63. 63. Ha, 63. Make a big difference. All right. 63, um, in your case, what would be important is you are a very smart, intelligent, uh, analytical person, and you're very good more behind the scenes and in front of this, uh, uh, in, in, behind the scene uh, rather than in the front of the scene somehow. Everything to do with, with the responsibilities, leadership in your case, uh, to handle, uh, what kind of studies are you making right now? What, what did you graduate on? Photography. Yeah. Photography, but okay, that's perfect because it's something I don't see you like in front. I see you more behind somehow to organize and structureize. But you are a very highly intelligent person, and you could create concepts, visual effects. You could create things that will uh, put many little things together in a ground situation. And I, but but more than that, it's like if I were you. In your case, not only did you f finish uh, studying uh, photography, but you're a kind of person that has to continue and follow up more studies in the future, especially for the next three or four years. I don't know if, is, is that your intention? Yeah, I was thinking of that. You have to pursue. You still, it's like whatever you're going to be at your best, somehow for me, in your case, by your date of birth and your numerology, is much more towards in the next two, three years. But you're going to start finding more and more of yourself the next year. You're going to, but continue your studies. After 1992, 94, this is when you're going to reach your peak because you're super, extremely talented. And somehow, financially, you'll be quite lucky in 1991. So just continue to do, start working in that photography, but continue you and pursue your studies because it's worth it for you right. okay Love you and kiss for you. valentine's day she is going to consult the stars to answer your questions on affairs of the heart only 
So if you want to know which uh, astrological sign combinations make uh, the most passionate lovers, the best lovers, the most fireworks, which uh, combinations are doomed to failure, give us a call this morning, 1-800-363-9995, or if you want to know how to get that Aries that you want. Give us a call. JoJo is here to answer your questions. Good morning, JoJo. Good morning and happy Valentine. May Same all the you. energies of love just uh, pour, pour on your head. On we need this time right now. We oh, need this. We do. Let's start off with talking about some of uh, the passion. What signs are the most passionate? Some of the most, what you could call the greatest lovers, are the sign number we know. Well, the famous Scorpio in a way, but more in the physical sense. Leo is also very renowned as uh, being an incredible lover with many partners but also giving a little uh, heart. So it's like more, on the, uh, more than the physical level. Mm -hmm. And Libra is also a good lover. No, the sexual side. Se only sexual side, okay. Strictly the most physical sign that really could do it on a physical sense only without getting involved in any way is definitely Scorpio number one. It has that kind of a reputation, but it, uh, it is true. It means with a Scorpio, you don't have to work long. It's like they know how to get <laughs> to the situation directly without losing any time. I call, that, I call them the sign of the main course. <laughs> no hors d'oeuvre, no dessert, no soup, no salad, main course, that's it. Leo people are more sophisticated and they're more on the romantic side and they like to deal a little bit with more compliments and the human contact Leo? is much more important, yeah. But they're also capable of loving two or three people at the same time, which is the same thing as Scorpio, but depends if it's a woman or a man. A woman Scorpio, when she loves, her man becomes like God. When a man Scorpio loves, it's like many people should become like God or goddess. You know what <laughs> I mean? It's yeah. the difference. Also, there's another sign that's very nice in the love pattern that's very, very sensual and nice and very good lover. Taurus, man and woman are excellent, fantastic. And they're, not only that, they're usually quite reliable and they're usually on the loyal side. Mm -hmm. Although Taurus people are also known sometimes if they're not happy with a mate, to have an extra affair on the side for some reason. Let's talk about some of the great lovers in history uh, yep. from Hollywood and things like that and what their signs were and how they mix. Let's see, what do we have? Okay, it's you usually got Elizabeth Taylor and Richard Burton. Right. To me, that's one of the great love couples of all it time. It is, and it's like a love and hate. It's like I love you, I love you and I, I can't live without you, but it hurts so good. You know that kind of situation? It's like he is a Scorpio and Buffalo in Chinese horoscope. It means that what he wants, he gets. Mm -hmm. And when he doesn't want it anymore, he doesn't want it anymore. And he's very straightforward and very extremist. Elizabeth Taylor is a Pisces with a monkey rising. So it's fatal because Buffalo, the, the monkey is fascinated by the buffalo. And Buffalo, he thinks that the monkey is, he can't get control of it. Plus the Scorpio combination, it means all their lives they love each other, they, but they, they can't live together for some reason. But the fascination is like in a level of a physical that is so strong because Pisces is a very, it's like a sponge-like kind of lover. And she was a very idealist person at the same time, and he was more down to earth, but a passionate. Mm -hmm. So he was one of the few men in the whole life that really got to the bottom of her soul for some reason. So mm -hmm. you have then, so, so uh, a Pisces and Scorpio, you see element sign, like water sign go well together, like, like a fire sign go well together, and mm -hmm. also earth sign go well together. And many, like you have, uh, if you don't mind, Romeo Juliet, for instance. Mm -hmm. Romeo was a Pisces and Juliet was a Cancer. So these are very famous kind of relationship. Another one that's interesting, Einstein was a Pisces and his love, beautiful uh, lady, scientist wife that helped him to really create what he did was also a Pisces. So two Pisces together could also be a winner in many times. Is it just because they're Pisces or, it, or it, sometimes you the your same signs are okay? The same like two elements Scorpios usually or something. very good, except sometimes like two Scorpios as long as it depends on the Venus and the Mars in the chart. For okay. people who are listening right now and they know a little bit of astrology, the planets which control a lot of the love life is the Moon, the Venus, and the Mars. So according, if they have a compatible Venus, Mars, or Moon in the same sign, usually they have a fantastic relationship. Romeo Juliet was the case. They both have Venus and Mars in the same sign. That means they were totally soulmates. There's maybe one couple on a million that has the, the chance to attract in a lifetime the, the, the soulmate. And everybody else has to sort of live through different experiences mm -hmm. to crystallize and live relationship on the physical or intellectual or spiritual or heart level in order to eventually attract that kind of soulmate. Okay, let's go for one more famous couple before we go to the yes, phone. Yes, well, Laurent the call was a Taurus and, and uh, uh, of Bogart was also a Taurus. You can see that kind of relationship. I told you that loyalty that usually Taurus people have. Mm -hmm. You have Ursula Andres, Jean-Paul Belmondo. Ursula Andres was a, a Libra, Jean-Paul Belmondo is Aries. So we see air and fire go very well together too because the, the, the fire will warm up the air and the air will put the fire up. It's sort of a very, very complimentary situation. 